What is going on, comic fam? It's your boy, the Bearded Comic Bro, and I am joined by comic creator Clay Adams. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And I am excited. Uh, we actually had a mutual friend, Stephen Prince, who's been on the show multiple times. He reached out to me. He's like, Greg, you got to have uh, Clay on. And when he sent me your name, I was like, holy buckets. I know who he is I because I just finished reading Red Xmas from Scout a couple months ago when it was in their scout box. So I was like, yes, awesome. I got to have you on. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Yeah. I'm glad you dug that. Yeah. So I want to talk, I want to actually talk about that. I want to talk about your Kickstarter, yeah. but before we get into anything, I always like to start out these conversations, these interviews with just how did you get into comics? Like how did you decide you wanted to like comics and get into comics, the love of comics? So I started, like, I, I was brought in through TV, through, like, the Incredible Hulk TV show, Wonder Woman, Batman, you know, that, that 60s show. That was not camp to me. That was deadly serious. So you know? good. And um, uh, there was uh, Super Friends, right? I would watch that all the time. And then in, um, then, like, in, like, mid-80s, maybe, they came out with Super Powers. That was, like, the new toy line from Kenner, right? And they had, they had in every box, they had like little mini comics. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but they were numbered so you could like collect them all. And, um, and so I started, I, I started buying those and reading those little comics and I was like, oh, wow, oh, this is cool. Like, I don't have to, I don't have to wait for Super Friends to come on. Like, I can just read my, my little mini comic here. And then shortly after that, like I went into a, um, a drugstore and I saw the comic rack, you know, hey kids, comics. And I was like, oh my God, they make like big versions of these. This is awesome. And so, you know, I started picking stuff up and, and, and checking it out. And like um, one of the first comics I picked up off the rack there was, uh, was part two of Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. Uh, Alan Moore, Kurt Swan, uh, the final, you know, final Superman story. And like, that just ruined me. I was like, okay, all right, I'm in, I'm in. This is great stuff. And that was a great time to be getting into comics because it was like, you know, you got Crisis and then um, uh, Year One with Frank Miller. So I was reading all of this great stuff, all this fantastic stuff that uh, that I still go back to and, and reread today because it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's so good. tough to beat. It's so good. Well, yeah. it's funny you mentioned the super uh, power action figures because I mean, I had those and I completely forgot that they had the little mini comic books. Cause I have a handful yeah. of, I got Hawkman, I've got Martian Manhunter over on my other shelf um, that I had with kids. And so they're beat the shreds, but. Sure, sure. Yeah, those those mini comics, like I, they they need to start doing that. Like that was a really smart ploy cause you got a full story, yeah. but then but then like, because it was numbered, it was like you wanted to collect them all. I, they should do that for with toys now. Like we got you got to get those kids hooked. It's like cigarettes. You got to hook them when, when they got to find a way to get them in. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I, I honestly, now I'm like, I haven't even thought about those comics for so long. I want to go like check, like, are they collectibles? Like, are they like, are they hard to find on eBay and things like that? They, they probably are at this point, you know, and I don't even know who, like, I don't know that they had credits or anything. I don't know who worked on them, but I'd yeah. be very revisit those and find out i'm gonna i guarantee you i'm gonna be messaging you after this interview and just like i've fallen down a rabbit hole of <laughs> awesome. S send me all your research i can't yeah, i will and that, i'll be like creating a video of this so, um <laughs> so how did then how did you translate that then into getting into creating comics yeah so i was just like i once i started reading them like I just, I had to make my own. And so I was the kid that like, while all the other kids in the neighborhood wanted to be out playing baseball or riding bikes or whatever, I wanted to be at home writing and drawing my own comics. And, um, and so I did, like, I would, I would write and draw my own stuff, you know, and then I, and then I'd like send it off to uh, Dick Giordano at, at DC and like, you know, of course never hear, hear back because I was a kid sending him all comics. But, um, but, you know, that's, I mean, I did that for a, you know, probably an embarrassingly long time. And then, um, and then I kind of like, I kind of drifted out of it, you know, going to college. And then, um, and then in, in college, in my second year, I was at NYU and they had something called the Stanhattan Project, um, which, uh, which is where uh, a couple of Marvel editors, I think they were X-Men editors, uh, came down to NYU and they taught a class on, on how to write comics. And um, this was the second year of the Stanhattan Project. And in the first year, one guy had come out of it and he was like the guy that like, you know, he, he, he went from the NYU dramatic writing program to, uh, to the guy that wrote for Marvel, right? 
And, um, and until that moment, I knew Joe Kelly as the audiovisual guy for the dramatic writing program. So for all you kids out there, the AV guy back in the days before the computer and the internet and all that stuff, um, you would have to like, if you wanted to watch a movie in a classroom, you had to wheel in a big cart with a big TV on it and a VCR, probably maybe a DVD player, but that was kind of advanced. Uh, and some, yeah, somebody had to hook that all up and make sure that it all worked. And that was Joe Kelly. But now suddenly he was Mr. Big Shot working for Marvel. So everybody wanted to join this class. And I think they only had a, you know, limited seats. And at that point I had, I had started, um, uh, du a double major and um, and I, I really wanted to do the comics class but I was like oh I don't know that I've had, that I have time and I went I went to a few sessions and um, and I, I had to drop it because I, I I couldn't uh, I just couldn't keep up with the with the course load like I couldn't read every issue of Silver Surfer ever written uh, and then come up like come up with a pitch for like a year-long Silver Surfer arc which was like the assignment. Uh, with all the other stuff I had going on. This was not, this class was not for credit. Like it was purely just, uh, hey, you want to learn how to write comics, come come do this. But there was one guy in the class that uh, that everybody loved. Uh, the editors fell all over themselves uh, um, and everybody still loves, the, loves him today, falling all over themselves, complimenting him. And that's Brian K. Vaughn. Uh, so he was the second guy coming out of the Stanhattan Project. And, uh, and so I, uh, you know, the rest of us didn't stand a chance. So um, I guess I, it was, it was fine that I, that I stopped. You're like, I cut my, cut my losses. One. <laughs> so um, anyway, if that, if that story went on way too long, you can cut that. No, but this is great. This is why, this is why <laughs> I, I always like to ask this question because I mean, I've had 40, I don't even know how many creators on, but everyone's story into comics is so unique. And I think people just like to hear like how did you get into creating comics you know yeah. and they're so so no that we're keeping that in so <laughs> great well well in that case i'll keep talking um i i i just like even though i couldn't keep up with it then and i and i, I don't think it was the right time in my life um i always kept circling back to it and like you know if i if i i don't think i have a lot of regrets in life but but one is that like i really wanted to take art classes you know at the at the art student league or whatever um and i never did and I, I remember thinking like well you know if i could draw like i could draw my own comics like i wouldn't i wouldn't have to hire an artist i wouldn't have to do any of that um and and various things kept me from from taking those classes and i just it, i just kept letting life get in the way until finally at a certain point i was like i'm not getting any younger and if i don't start making my own stuff like when am I going to find the time? It's just, it's not going to get any easier. So, um, so finally I pulled it together and, and started making my own comics. Nice. That's, that's fantastic because like I said, like, you know, just trying to find that what, what made it happen? What, what worked? So what was your first, um, comic that you created? Cause I know we talked about, um, uh, red Christmas or we, I mentioned it, we haven't talked about it yet. And yeah, I mentioned your Kickstarter, which is in the second arc of uh, uh, PBOW, right? PBOW, yeah, 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 yeah. So that was actually the first comic I ever created. Okay. Was PBOW, and uh, I don't—is is this a family show? Can I say the full title? You on can the say air? the full title on this show. It's okay. Okay, great, great, fantastic. So that's a—that's an acronym for Pregnant Bitches of War, and the book is as crazy as you might imagine from that title. Um. And, and so how, how that came about was that um, I, my writing partner is a guy named Alexander O. Philippe. Um, he's a documentary filmmaker now. He did People versus George Lucas and um, 7852 about Hitchcock's shower scene um, and a whole bunch of other stuff that you may or may not have seen. Nice. Um, but uh, he and I were writing screenplays and we were writing a screenplay called Dead Skins which, um, which had a subplot with some pregnant women in it. And I won't, uh, I won't spoil it, but at the end of the screenplay, a whole bunch of angry pregnant women are sort of there like holding all of their guns. You know, it's just like this group of, of like, you know, badass angry pregnant women with guns. And we just started laughing and we were like, oh my God, this should be our next script. This is, uh, it's pregnant bitches of war. And we started laughing at, at how awful the title was and then we were like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if we could like make this into something? Like, let's actually make this a, a decent concept. 
And then we started thinking like, well, wait, this doesn't sound like a movie. This sounds like a, a comic book. Mm. And so that's how we started like, you know, making the comic. And it took like, it took a couple of years to sort of, you know, flesh out the concept, flesh out the characters, find an artist, find a new artist, you know, when the first artist could continue, find another artist when that artist couldn't continue. Um, and so it, it, it took a while to get that first issue out. I mean, like, I think we came up in the, with the concept like in 2008, 2009. Okay. And then didn't put out the first issue till like 2013. So it, it took some time. Yeah. Um, but at the same time we were doing that, we decided to translate Deadskins into um, a five issue miniseries okay. as well. So we released both books on our website. It's friedcomics.com. And we had, uh, you know, we would, you know, release a few pages every week or whatever, just like a web comic. And, uh, and we thought, oh, we're going to be like millionaires uh, selling this stuff, like 99 cent PDF downloads, right? We're just going to be rolling in the dough. Um, and, uh, and we weren't, uh, it didn't, didn't quite work out that way, but, um, but we had, you know, we had a, we had a decent amount of people like downloading the stuff and talking about it and reviewing it and, and pirating it. Cause once it's out there, it gets pirated. Um, so, so people were like, people were reading it. We knew they were enjoying it, but we were like this, how is this, like, how does anybody make money at this? You know, right. like this just doesn't make any sense. And so we finally, then we heard about Kickstarter in like 2014 and i was like um okay let's uh let's let's kickstart something so we had we had red christmas um like ready to go uh as a comic and like we sh we should have kickstarted pbow or deadskins because that's like the audience we had built up but we were like no man let's let's go for something new let's do something new so we we kickstarted red christmas the first issue and um and like halfway through, I was like, oh my God, we're not going to fund. Like, this is not, this is not going anywhere. Um, Cause I knew nothing about running a Kickstarter. So then I started Googling like, well, how do you, how do you run a comics Kickstarter? And I came across uh, Tyler James okay. who runs the comics launch course. And he's got the podcast and um, you know, this communities and stuff. And he had a bunch of blogs on how to run Kickstarters. And I, uh, like, I read every single one. Like, I binged them. I followed every single bit of his advice. And lo and behold, we funded. Um, and that's sort of how we figured out that, oh, okay, so creators can, like, do this Kickstarter thing. Yeah. Like, this is actually, like, a viable means of creating comics. And so then it was like, forget about it. We're going we're gonna to move on to Kickstarter now. So you so Red Christmas went uh, started at uh, as a Kickstarter. You then did you do Deadskins as a Kickstarter as well? Yeah. So we started. Um, we we finally have started putting that out. Um, we we kickstarted uh, a first volume last year, which was the first two issues, and then earlier this year we did the second volume, which is uh, issues three and four. And then later this year, we're gonna do the fifth issue uh, with some extra material in the back, um, kind of as its own volume. But I wasn't even gonna, um, I wasn't even gonna put that up. Like we had kind of moved on. And then, um, and Charlie Stickney, who's the co-publisher at Scout Comics, he, uh, he sent me a message like last year, you know, March, back when all of this uh, COVID stuff was starting. And he was like, you know, Kickstarter, like there are no projects on Kickstarter right now. Like nobody's launching, everybody's mm -hmm. freaking out, but like the backers are still there. They're still backing what's on there. So if you've got a project, like now's the time. And I was like, well, I got this thing, like we put on our website, you know, seven years ago. Um, you know, I, I guess I could do that. And he was like, yeah, 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 put, put that up. And so like, I just sort of like hastily threw it up and it was like by far our most successful Kickstarter. <laughs> um, and then, and then the second volume, you know, did even better than that. But it's like, it was just this thing sitting in my drawer. I was never going to do. And it was like, it, you know, I, I put all this effort into running all these other Kickstarters that was like so much more of a struggle and this, like I just threw up there, but I think the timing was right in the sense yeah. that like, um, you know, there just wasn't as much competition for eyeballs. 
Um, people wanted to spend money and be entertained. And, it, and the artist on the book uh, happened to have gone on to do some bigger things. And so I think there was some interest in seeing her work um, you know, uh, at an earlier stage of evolution. Nice. Yeah, I, if, if Charlie Stigney tells you to do something, my experience is you just do it. <laughs> that's, like, yeah, that's, that's what I go by. Uh, he, I had him on the show. He was actually like my second guest I ever did when I started doing interviews uh, yeah. because I fell in love with White Ash. Um, and if he tells you how to do something for a Kickstarter, you listen up. <laughs> and that uh, is so true. I, I like what he says is law. So I, I just try to go by that and, <laughs> and, not, and not question it. That's right. <laughs> so let's talk then about PBOW uh, yeah. a little bit. Your Kickstarter that's live right now. So y- you mentioned that it was, it kind of so did it start in dead skins that the or was that you made it sound like uh having the females you know uh pregnant with the guns was that in that issue or yeah i mean it was it was in the comic but they were different okay. characters okay. right so like it wasn't um you know it, it wasn't really the genesis of the comic like it was the genesis in our minds cuz that's like where the concept came from but they are kind of unrelated Okay. Um, although, although if we if we get to this third volume of Dead uh, of PBOW, it will be a prequel to Dead Skins. Uh, PBOW is a time travel comic. I haven't gotten to that part yet, but uh, nice. so it would be a it would be a prequel okay. to this volume. Um, so uh, so yeah, it was kind of like it was its own thing. Um, but the whole like everything we do at Fried Comics is like. It's all kind of related it's all like yeah. a one one universe if you will so we've kind of talked about it a little bit we've hinted around to it but if someone is new because i actually haven't gotten a chance to uh check out pbow so this is new to me yeah. so if you're selling it to me you're selling it to one of my viewers here or listeners on the podcast uh what is it what is it about yeah sure so um we like to pitch it is like the handmaid's tale meets kill bill and it's uh, it's perfect for fans of Preacher, The Boys, um, Rick and Morty. It's um, so it's a time travel story about these six pregnant women who are plucked from the time stream by inventor Nikola Tesla. They go back in time. They accidentally kill a young Hitler, but they make the world worse. Now, with Tesla acting as Charlie to their angels, they must save the world from a hell of their own creation before their water breaks. Pregnant bitches of war. I mean, gang, if you're listening to this podcast, you're watching this video and you're not hooked. I don't know. Like, cause I kind of <laughs> want to just end this video right now in this interview and just go by everything, but I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> all right. All right. You can do it on the Kickstarter. I'll let you know. We got plenty of catch up tears. So yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about what are, so you've got catch up tears. You've got tears that if people are new to it, um, can they, you know, could they come into this and just go the first arc if they don't, you know, like this, this new arc that you created, if they don't want to play catch up or the funds are just tight. Uh, sure. Let's talk about some of those. Yeah, for sure. So we do have, um, so we tried to keep the start of this second arc self-contained. Um, so we, in the first issue, we did kind of a recap um, of what happened in volume one, just to sort of get you up to speed. And, um, and we did it, we did it visually. We took art from the previous volume and, oh. and created a nice little, you know, you know how like on the old TV shows, like on Lost, they'd be like previously, and then they'd show you all these clips. Right? This is just where I feel old. You literally say, you know, like on the old TV shows, like Lost, I'm like, <laughs> wait, is that? And I'm like, oh yeah, that came out like 14 years ago. Yeah. Right, right. And, and they don't do that anymore now because everything streams, you know, on Netflix and you don't have to watch the previously because you sat and you watched all, you know, all three episodes. seasons. In, yeah, in, in one season, right? Or in one sitting. Yeah. So um, so we, we tried to make it so this this could be like you could you could on ramp in the okay. second volume without having to go back and read the first. Now, of course, if you go back and read the first, like, you know, it, it's a it's a whole experience. Yeah. Um, but, um, uh, but this is, you know, this is a, it's a new art team. It's, um, it's, it's got a different look, a little bit of a different vibe, you know, cause those, those first five comics, they were like, like, you know, I, so I, I referenced Rick and Morty before and, yeah. and, and, 
you know, like that show started as like these little shorts. It was Doc and Marty, right? Like they were doing a riff on on Back to the Future. Um, and I'm sure I'm, I, I don't know, maybe I'm telling you stuff that you already know, but um, but they were kind of like crude and um, and uh, raw, yeah. you know, and, and then, you know, by the time they got to Rick and Morty and then after a few episodes, like you, you kind of like, you kind of like find your, your level. So that, that first volume is a little bit like the Doc and Marty uh, okay. shorts of, of Rick and Morty, you know, it's just kind of, we're kind of like finding our way. Um, and and by the end we we really do find our way and then and then in the um, uh, in the second volume it's a brand new art team so it's we we wanted it to be like like this is a new beginning yeah. you know so if you wanted to come in here you could come in here you don't it's like going back to some of the older TV shows right like you could just turn on an episode you know or pick up an issue of a comic right and like you didn't have to read all 100 right. issues previously or whatever um and so we wanted it to be like that it's like if yeah if you want to go back and get that stuff and and read it you're gonna have a great experience you're gonna have a great read we're, we're proud of it yeah um but if you want to start here start here you'll you'll be fine nice so you have you have catch-up tiers i'm assuming uh i saw on there you have digital so people can go digital they can go uh yep. hard you know not hardcover but um you know actual hard, yeah hard copy yeah uh yeah hard copies of it uh what else what are some other tiers that you guys are offering on this one that you want to mention that people might be interested in yeah so um well so our our we do have the digital tiers because i'm i find that with a lot of stuff i'm going digital in a in a lot of ways um and so we wanted to keep that like nice and simple and affordable for people. If you want to spring for the for the hard copy, we uh, we did a nice wraparound cover, a big epic wraparound cover, because that's what I like. I love about those old comics. You'd you'd get those special issues like JLA two hundred, you know, and it's the big wraparound cover. Um, and so um, we got that. We get we have a variant cover by uh by tony donnelly who does albert einstein time mason and um oh, nice. i'm i'm gonna sla slaughter this name fabiana mascolo uh who does uh firefly um oh, and nice. did yasmin for scout um which is beautiful that was a beautiful book. Yeah, it's a beautiful okay. book yeah, it's beautiful book yeah yeah she called so she colored it tony donnelly uh drew it and it's a it's a uh it's a variant homage to the man with the golden gun poster uh, only this is uh, the man with the metal dick. Um, it's it's a it's a that's a new character uh, that's appearing in this issue. This is a first appearance of a brand new character, the man with the metal dick. In our in our first issue, um, the the bad guy is the exalted father. I haven't even talked about him, um, but the exalted father is the bad guy. And uh, he received uh, a prophecy about some things that are going to happen. But one of the things in the prophecy was that he would be betrayed by the man with the metal dick. And so um, that character first appears here in this issue. And you'll find out who it is and, and how that person came to be. And, uh, and it's, it's every bit, a bit as nuts as it sounds. <laughs> Pun intended, I guess. Yeah. But I didn't even catch it, but yeah. now I got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what other tiers do we have? Let's see. So then we've got uh, we've got a virgin variant. We call it our virgin cover because they're all pregnant. Um, but it's the wraparound cover without any text on it. Then you can get all three covers yeah. if you so desire. Uh, Fabio uh, Ramachi, who is the uh, the artist on the book. He's got a sketchbook that he's he'll sign for you and send to you at some of the higher tiers, or you can get him to draw an actual sketch on nice. the cover. And uh, we've got a, a blind box, original cover art for sale. Um, we got a whole bunch of stuff. Come on out and check it out. Yeah. And the link to the Kickstarter is in the description of this video um, or in the description of the podcast if you're listening online. So check that out for sure. I mean, man, this just seems like a while. It seems very like, well, you said Kill Bill. I was going to say like Grindhouse, uh, Tarantino style. Uh, and it makes sense then. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very much the vibe we were going for. You know, it's uh, um, 
somebody like one of our poll, poll quotes, somebody called it like crude, snappy, but most of all fun. And, and I feel like that, that is sort of the ethos, right? Like, right. Um, yeah. you know, it's just going to be sort of some raw humor and violence and action. And, you know, so that's why I was kind of calling out like the, the Tarantino stuff or like, yeah. you know, if you like Garth Ennis, um, Mark Miller, it's, it's sort of in that same kind of vein. You know, okay. we're not we're not trying to to cure cancer or like change the world or anything like that. Like it's there's a reason why we call ourselves fried comics, right? Is that it's like it's it's like fried food. It's fatty. It's salty. It's not necessarily good for you, but it tastes good going down. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, well, before I let you go, I gotta I gotta talk to you briefly, real quick about Red Christmas. Um, yeah. Uh, and that, so it's, you had it as a Kickstarter and then, um, and then I know that now got released through scout. Um, what did, where did this kind of idea come from? What is that book about? Um, and are we going to get more? Yes. Yes, you are. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm working on the trade, um, as we speak, not, not as we speak, but today I was actually putting it together. Um, and forgive me for like moving around here. I was, yeah, I you're fine. In my, uh, my cord. Um, so yeah, yeah. So, so that book, um, that was the first story that Alex and I ever wrote together. And, um, and it came about cause we were, we were just trying to think of like, you know, what really made a good horror villain. And, and we were like, man, like, like Freddy Krueger, like he's the, he's the best. Cause you know, cause he comes to you in your sleep. And, and you're so defenseless. Mm. And, you know, cause like, like Hitchcock got that right about the shower. That's what they say about the shower scene. Like that's so yeah. scary. Cause you're so defenseless in the shower. Right. And, and you're defenseless in your sleep. And so we were like, all right, well, like what other villains could come to you in your sleep? Santa Claus. Cause that always freaked me out. Like, like this idea that you know, because the same people that would tell me every night that, you know, we were totally safe, nobody could get into our house, nobody was going to break in. Those same people told me that once a year, this like big dude climbed down the chimney and like walked around the house while everybody was sleeping and that he like left gifts for everybody. And, um, and I thought that like, that's really terrified. That terrified me you know, for a while. And I, and I thought, well, what if, you know, what if he was like a bad guy? What if we made him into a bad guy? And what would have to happen to make him into that? And we thought, well, what if he had like an experience, like a, like a falling down kind of thing, you know, where it's like, he's just having a really bad day and he loses his mind. And, um, and so that's kind of, that's kind of where we went with it. Like we, we, I mean, we knew that we weren't the first people to come up with this idea of like a bad Santa. I know there have been, you know, other other things and and um, you know other like other movies set at Christmas time, like like Black Christmas. I just saw that movie for the first time this year, and it blew my mind. It's fantastic. Um, so check it out. But um, you know, or or Gremlins was another favorite like Christmas movie. But we wanted to. Um, we, we wanted to make something that like, that could be scary and funny, but mm -hmm. then also like be something that you want to pull out and read once a year, you know? Um, Cause the holidays special is like a staple of all mass media. And, um, but, but it hasn't really come to comics like in that same way. And, um, and, and so anyway, we, we, we wrote this story, you know, many many years ago and um and like i said it was the first story we wrote together we were young writers um i think the bones of that version of it were good but uh but maybe our execution was kind of lacking in some okay. ways so when um when we started doing the comics and we were looking for like we had we had done dead skins and we had done pbow and we were like well what like what should we do next and we we just kept thinking like you know, this is a really good idea that we had. Um, let's do, let's do it as a comic and let's do it better this time. So it's not like we're just, you know, 
I always hate that. Like, I hate to say that some of these things came from screenplays, <clears throat> excuse me, that some of these things came from screenplays um, because I feel like that, that gives people a certain idea of like who we are and what we're yeah. trying to do. But the reality is, is that we love comics um, and, and translating a story that existed in another, uh, in another like medium or form like there's an art to it. And so we really tried to make every issue self-contained um, and, and tell a complete story and give you a complete experience, but then you put them all together and it tells this, you know, big epic of the time Santa went nuts and, and lost his mind. And, and um, I don't want, I don't want to say too much. Cause I think so. So Scout put out the first issue at Christmas time Mm -hmm. And then, and then um, this is part of their nonstop initiative, right? So that, so that it goes from first issue straight to the trade. So okay. they're not going to bother. Yeah. So they're not going to issue, they're not going to release issues two, three, four, and five um, to stores. They're just going to uh, put it all together in a trade. So then you can binge it, you know, all at once. And I think um, they've done that with like Metal Shark Bro. And I think maybe a couple of other. Of okay. Their they've done that with um i think it's smart for this title because it's hard to sell a christmas book when it's not christmas and so i so i get that so we talked about possibly bringing it out in july for christmas in july but i think we decided to delay it till closer to the holiday season mm -hmm. um so i'm i'm putting it together right now uh having a great time just like reliving that whole creative journey that we went through putting this book together um, and it's, and it's cool. We're going to throw in some, some nice extras too, at the back of the trade. Like I'm a, I'm a believer that, that like whatever, um, like whatever way you choose to support a book, like that thing should be a fulfilling experience. Yeah. So, so I felt like the first issue, you know, I wanted to put in a little personal letter for myself. Uh, we did a little Frida backup story that, that we put in there. Um, and then, so for the trade, we want to put in some extra things too, because we feel like, you know, if you, if you support the individual issues, you should get a certain experience. Yeah. And if you support the trade, you should get another experience too. That's awesome. Like some, I saw the nonstop lo logo on there and I didn't realize that that's such an interesting idea though, of like, yeah. put out an issue, get readers hooked and then just say like, Hey, we're getting the trade. And I think that's a brilliant idea. Cause I, you don't see that often yeah yeah it's a it's a new thing that they're trying like i said i know they've done it with metal shark bro okay. and maybe like a couple of other titles um but but i think it really makes sense especially in a market where it's like for indie books you know like a scout i mean even even for dc and marvel it's like the number one is the big selling issue and then it's right. sort of like you know it can be diminishing returns after that so um so i think this is really smart because people are kind of wanting to move towards reading trades now more right. than individual issues yeah so i think it's a really smart strategy yeah i know i have i have friends that will buy issue one of a series because they want that issue one and then they're they wait for the trade then and right so this would be right up their alley and the illustration of you know kind of like that falling down like michael douglas that bad day like it's because it is it's just that slow like man, i think people will really dig it so if they haven't checked it out yet um from scout do that for sure <laughs> yes and it's and we just to make it more confusing so we spell it like red xmas so it's r-e-d-x-m-a-s and uh, that was for purely uh, design reasons. It looked nice, but nobody knows how to pronounce it. So if you want to call it Red Xmas, we'll call it Red Xmas. You want to call it Red Christmas, we'll call it Red Christmas. It's all good, man. Whatever you want. It works. So it works. Yeah. Well, again, Clay, I thank you so much for um, you know just taking some time to talk comics. Uh, before I let you go, is there anything else that you got going on that you want to promo or anything? Yeah, well, um, it, just the, the Red Christmas trade coming out later this year, for sure. Um, there's going to be more Dead Skins coming uh, on Kickstarter later this year. I also co-edited the Nightmare Theater anthology Ooh. that was on Kickstarter last year. Yeah, and we're going to be doing more of that. I've got a whole bunch of books that are gonna, about to show up at my house 
and I'm I got started for that now. Kickstarter yeah. to come. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. That's I, see, I didn't even, I didn't even know you were a part of that, and I have that. So there we oh, go. Oh, awesome! Yeah, well, yeah, I don't yeah. have it yet, but I, I you I will. will. Yes, I will. you, you will, you will get it. Yeah, I will. and um, yeah. So, so uh, we're gonna do some more of that. That's nice. coming. And um, let's see what else. Oh, and I have an, I have another title, a little sword and sorcery book that's coming out. Uh, should be kickstarted later this year. Um, awesome called well should i should i tell you the title should we should we save it for later like it, what's i'll tease it all right so it's called blazing blade of frankenstein and it's uh sword and sorcery meets gothic horror Ooh, yeah a little tease so see gang if yeah. you stick around to the end of the episode that's why you, you gotta, gotta watch the whole thing that's, that's right. right so yeah. Well, again, Clay, thank you so much. Uh, where can people follow you? Everything that you're doing, if they want to stay connected and see what Kickstarters, because you you got a lot coming out. So, like, how can they stay connected with what you do? What's the best way to? Follow yeah, for you? sure. Um, probably on Twitter, I am at Clay's Evil Twin, and uh, you can also go to FriedComics.com. You can sign up for our newsletter, or as I like to call it, it's an online letter column. And our uh, our illustrious waitress Frida will uh, will write you some some emails twice a month, and you can chat, you can have fun. She tells some jokes. She's very salty. That Frida, uh, she might give you some free things and keep you up to date on what's going on with Fried Comics. That's awesome. And all the links to Clay's uh, social media, Fried Comics, are in the description of this video below. Make sure you check it out. Go. Uh, click the link on this uh, below for the Kickstarter. Go support it um, because it sounds buck wild and I'm here for it. So, <laughs> um, with that being said, uh, hopefully you all can find some time to curl up, grab a book and nerd out. Peace.